Hello everyone, we're Pets Angels and today we are going to talk about invasive alien species in non-native environments. For this particular subject, we're going to focus on a hippo problem in Colombia and the local invasive alien species in the Philippines. Included in this presentation are the basic information on hippopotamuses and the hippo problem in Colombia, a concept map about it that we prepared, some of the viable solutions to this dilemma, invasive alien species in the Philippine context, and the possible ways to address these problems. Here's a few fun facts about hippos. Did you know that hippos secrete an oily red substance that acts as a moisturizer, sunblock, and protects them from germs? This also makes them look like they are sweating blood. This is Pablo Escobar. He is one of the most notorious criminals of all time. The founder of the infamous Medellin drugs cartel in the 1980s. He is responsible for kidnappings, bombings, and indiscriminate assassinations. Pablo Escobar is also responsible for what scientists call an ecological time bomb. A group of hippos originally imported by Escobar to his private zoo decades ago has multiplied. The hippos have escaped Escobar's former ranch and moved into Colombia's main river, the Magdalena. Spread over a growing area, nobody knows exactly how many there are but estimates indicate there may be a total population between 80 to 100. Population of hippos in Colombia estimates ranging from 80 to 120 animals. The hippos from Hacienda Napoles are spreading across Colombia's biggest river basin, from which many thousands of people make their living. Hippopotamuses are large, round, water-loving animals that are native to Africa. The word hippopotamus comes from the Greek word for water horse or river horse, although hippos and horses aren't closely related. The closest living rel relatives to hippos are pigs, whales, and dolphins. This is according to the San Diego Zoo. Hippos live in sub-Saharan Africa. They live in areas with abundant water as they spend most of their time submerged to keep their skin cool and moist. Considered amphibious animals, hippos spend up to 16 hours per day in the water, according to National Geographic. Hippos are special beasts hanging out in groups called schools, floats, pods, or sieges. Schools of hippos usually consist of 10 to 30 members, including both females and males, although some groups have as many as 200 individuals. No matter its size, the school is usually led by a dominant male. Scientists and experts have been researching for ways to turn this situation around. Some of the proposed solutions revolve around the use of special PZV vaccine, which are contraceptive that will help in controlling the reproduction rates among the hippos. To give you a better visualization, we will use this concept map in delving deeper into this topic. Here we have the hippo problem that started way back three decades ago when Pablo Escobar smuggled exotic animals in his hacienda Napoles. The problem that this posed is that, for decades, these amphibians continue to grow in numbers because of the lush habitation that they have found themselves in. This caused massive destruction upon the already existing ecosystem in the area. Some of the positive effects of this are, locals have developed a sense of protective instinct towards these creatures, and there has been a boom in their tourism industry. While some of the negative effects are, algal bloom caused by the feces of these hippos, increased competition for nutrition, and possible aggressive behavior of the hippopotamuses. The factors at risk here are land availability, water safety, biodiversity, and human health. Some of the possible solutions to this problem is hippo hunt, castration, relocation, and specialized contraceptive. How can we relate this in the Philippine context? According to Ravindira Joshi, Yoshi in the Philippines, data on the impact of invasive alien species 
on native biota are scarce and limited to a number of anecdotal reports indicate that native species may be adversely affected through competition, predation, habitat alteration, and parasitism. Impact of IAS in the 11 to 2 Philippines is poorly understood because of lack of knowledge about taxonomic identity of IAS and also lack of extensive and comprehensive technical information. Failure to realize the potential ecological damage the Philippine biodiversity and consequent economic losses and possible hazard to human health, failure of implementation of laws and introduction of exotic species, and unwillingness to interfere in the commerce and trade of exotic species. What are the invasive alien species in the Philippines? According to the study of Ravindir Yoshi Joshi, there are invasive aquatic plants, invasive aquatic animals, invasive vertebrates, and invasive invertebrates. The invasive vertebrates are comprised of different kinds, plant-based organisms and non-native earthworms. The invasive vertebrates are a variety of the following, different types of rodents, lizards, birds, and frogs. While the invasive aquatic animals are golden apple snail, white gobby, eleotree, janitor fish, jaguar guapote, and mosquito fish. How can we address and alleviate the problems about alien invasive species in the Philippines? The majority of invasive alien species we see today were artificially introduced in the current environments which they live in. Most amphibious and reptilian invasive species were introduced to our locale due to the belief that they would reduce the number of crop-destroying insects like locusts. Similarly, introducing rodent and lizard species to reduce cockroaches and other pests. Why are these invasive species a problem in the first place? We break this down in three key points. First, they are hardy. These animals were introduced into our country in very small amounts. However, the fact is they easily adapt to the environment. They were able to reproduce greatly in a matter of years. This is harmful because they altered the hierarchy of the food chain. Second, their defense mechanisms don't allow nature to take its course and removes the equilibrium that exists within it. This looks like some species of frogs rapidly producing and destroying their immediate surroundings. Attempts of poisoning them would be unproductive because some have adapted to become resistant against it. Or the fact that even if some animals are capable of consuming them like crocodiles, some species are too toxic to consume and will end up killing the endemic animal. Third, the reason why a lot of species go extinct in the first place is because of utility. It looks like the arapaima, which doesn't produce much, are greatly depleting because of overfishing due to demand for meat. In contrast, the Plato is so common with the new ones that human interaction does not exist because no one is interested in a pigo. Similarly, no one is interested in a cane toad. This means not only are these invasive species reproducing at a massive rate, they are also widely left alone by the general population because they do not serve a valuable purpose. Other possible alternatives and why they don't work. First, we can't poison them like the kuhol for example, because they are usually found in rice plantations or ponds. If we poison them, we compromise our fishing industries and crops. And some species are even immune to poison. Even if we poison species that do not naturally dwell within crops, the likelihood is we still manage to poison endemic animals while the invasive species remain alive. Second, you also can't reintroduce another invasive species to eat them because that would be counterintuitive. This means we can't introduce hippos, for example, in the Philippines to combat the rising number of lizards because that only brings a fresh set of problems. And third, you can't compromise with them because they are very hardy and not very good with compromise. With that being said, we propose three probable solutions. First is a systematic government response in the form of agencies helping handle the systematic capture and culling of these species. Basic techniques are being used in status quo already, like for example in Australia, cane toads are systematically shot by hunters. Because in comparison to hippos, we can't exactly gather all the frogs, rats, and lizards and sterilize them one by one. 
Second, we're going to make incentive structures that pushes for change. This can look like reward systems or can exist in forms of disseminating information. This can look like you getting paid when you bring 100 rats to your local government or being compensated for your hard work for keeping the city clean. And third, and most importantly, we want to shift the forms of commercial products in line with these types of features, like capturing placos, taking them out of river basins to, put, to be put into pet stores, or use frog skins to use them as ornaments or accessories. The beauty in this is that we deplete the resources we have in the wild. So even if you make an industry out of these creatures, the likelihood is this will be an isolated industry. The conclusion is that all invasive species only bring to a certain extent destructive capacities to the endemic surroundings. It is only beneficial to remove them from the picture because otherwise, the ones who are going to be removed are the endemic creatures that already exist. Thank you for listening. We're Pat's Angels. <laughs>